Internet, how are you tonight? I'm Steve from GraphicDesignerTips.com. Welcome back to another episode of Logo to Design Bootcamp, where every week I choose another letter of the alphabet, design a fictitious logo for you to learn from, and ultimately become a better graphic artist. So when it comes to each episode of Logo Design Bootcamp, I usually do this stuff on the fly, like I always say. But in this case, I've been waiting for this episode for a long time because it's based on something that I am very passionate about. Uh, it's hockey. And uh, ice hockey, roller hockey, it doesn't really matter. I'm a huge New York Ranger fan. Unfortunately, we have no season as of yet, or most likely as of never uh, again. But um, this is something I'm very passionate about. I've played my whole life. And, uh, you know, anytime I'm playing around, just like designing things, it's always around my sport and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So today I have came, come up with a logo uh, called Hot Shot Hockey right over here. And uh, it's based on um, a couple of different elements. The reason I called it Hot Shots Hockey is because everybody who puts on a pair of skates, they think they're a hot shot. Um, I mean, I personally know I am because I've been playing my whole life all through college and all that stuff. But, uh, I still love going back to the rink and, and schooling these little kids, these uh, teenagers who are full of life. It's fun. So uh, it's fun being a hot shot. So um, if you notice, this is more of a street hockey logo uh, with the um, the wheel is actually what the center is. At first, I was I was turning that into a puck. And I was like, you know what? I kind of want to go back to my roots as a street hockey player and uh, you know put a wheel in the middle. Um, the background, as you can see, there's like a net in the background. Uh, a little bit of uh, a texture that kind of depicts that. Um, aside from that, we have the two hockey sticks. Um, those are not Nike symbols back to back. Those are hockey sticks, um, but more of a uh, you know a misrepresentation of a hockey stick. But you know, it's more of an illustration. You can tell what it is if you really look at it. Also, when you look at the word "hot" and "shots," you're going to notice it's actually the same word. And I purposely did this. Every week, I design a logo with little intentions of, of new things for you to look at. That there are many logos in the world where the, the word is built in within another word. And the way that I made it stand out in this case was by turning it red. Uh, that was actually the color palette I wanted from the beginning anyway. But the fact that the H, the O, and the T is red, um, red stands out. So you're going to read hot first, and then you're going to read shots. So uh, that's a little fun tidbit about this logo. So uh, let's get into Adobe Illustrator. Let's build this bad boy and um, learn a little bit. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create these hockey sticks on top by coming to the ellipse tool. Uh, we're gonna make one ellipse and we're going to hit option click and move. It's gonna make another one. It's actually copied it on top, but we're still moving it. We're gonna kind of try to make that shape and going to like that now we're gonna select both of them and we're gonna minus the front object from the back so we get the shape all alone and we're gonna turn this shape on an angle and we're going to command C to copy and then command F to copy in front it so it pasted one right on top of itself we're gonna come over to the reflect tool which is the letter Z uh, O and we're gonna click and move but hold the shift when you move <clears throat> and then we're just going to um move this a little bit like so so it's a little bit different from mine but um i think mine are a little bit skinnier but that works and now we're going to select both of these we're going to hit copy c command c and command b right behind it and we're going to throw a default stroke on it make sure that stroke is white and make it a couple points and you'll see why later um well actually i'll show you right now if i lay it over anything it's going to have a little white stroke on it. And if you're wondering why I don't put the stroke on the actual black, it's because when you when you do that, it actually eats away at the illustration. Um, when you put the stroke behind it, it just leaves the original and, and adds on behind it. So um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create this little net right here. And the way that I did this was pretty cool. I did a rounded rectangle. Um, I'm going to do one over here. Actually, I'm going to do one right on top of it so I can kind of see the... Uh, I need to, you need to set your corner radius. When you click this little crosshair right here, it's just a corner radius. Uh, I'm going to like 30 right now. And uh, that's good enough. Um, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to take this bottom with the direct selection and highlight it just like so. 
and I'm going to hit delete and it just broke the chain from here to here so basically I'm just going to click this point with the direct selection I'm gonna pull that out and I'm going to do the same thing with this side. I'm gonna pull that out now it doesn't quite look like the one I have up top and it's because we got to mess with the points a little bit now we're gonna to come to this corner point and we're gonna pull that up we're gonna pull that anchor right there so it's rounded we're gonna do the same thing on the left side make sure you're on the direct selection hit the letter a it's gonna be the one the arrow with the white not the arrow with the black and um, I'm going to actually just mess around with this real quick to me I want to make these corners a little bit more rounded I didn't do the right corner radius all right there we go cool all right that's good enough and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna command C and command F in front again and I'm going to take the black out of the center and I'm going to fill the outside stroke with red and I'm going to add some points to that and if you look over here how it's nice and flush the way that I do that over here is you actually have to go to edit outline stroke object path excuse me outline stroke and now it's a shape and you wanna kinda you're gonna get some of this stuff you can clean up with the direct selection um, what you wanna do here is you wanna make a rectangle and you wanna minus it from the front by selecting the stroke at the same time Oh, subtracting it right from the front and get that little white out of there you gotta you gotta actually hit the minus sign on the pen and delete the points so you're learning a lot right now actually uh, we're jumping into a bunch of different tools I wasn't expecting but that's fine um, I'm gonna just delete that point and you might have to move some points with your direct selection to kind of line things up um, you can do that on your own on the other side but um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make this background that was on top of the black and the way that I did that basically is I just started creating lines and I'm going to create one, two, and you keep copying by option shift, shift click, option shift click, option shift click, all right, click shift, excuse me, flip the click and the shift backwards, all right, so let me jump ahead to where we need to do with this. All right, so now I got my lines, and they're kind of sporadic. Um, I just did this really quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overlay this. I'm going to turn that stroke to white now. You'll be able to see it. I'm going to overlay it on top of the back, the black. And we have to actually send the back to the black to the back by going to Object Arrange, Send to Back. And now it's on top. And you can manipulate this by, you know, changing the transparency right now. I did put it at 40%. If I do it at 100, you're going to see it's very prominent and a little bit too much. So now it's back to 40% and better. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make that wheel in the, in the middle by uh, doing an ellipse. And we're going to make the ellipse like so, right? And we're going to make sure it's not a good perfect circle and we're going to we're going to fill that with red and we're going to hit E on the keyboard so we can mess around with this and just turn it just a little bit and we're going to now command C command F paste in front and we're going to make this a little bit smaller this circle and actually try not distort a little bit and we're going to move that up and I'm gonna fill this with black and I'm gonna put a white stroke on here. I'm gonna increase that white stroke. All right, now here's where the fun part comes in. Now we're gonna make more layers on, we're gonna make not layers, but we're gonna make more instances of this circle. We're gonna go to Command C and Command F and now we're going to, we're actually going to copy that exactly and I'm gonna go back to the original circle I just copied and on the inside I'm going to turn that to red and make it much darker by adding more black into it so it's gonna kinda of add that dimension in there and um, I'm just trying to look at what I did up here I mean doing that wheel it probably took me like a nice half hour of, of messing around with ideas so I'm just gonna maybe make my stroke lighter um, you can also go deep again and go command C command F and put another one right inside of it and you know not 
not yeah, not too much smaller, so it kind of gives it that dimension. But mess it around with it yourself. You'll you'll get it in the end, and um, you know it's gonna be a really cool thing to learn um, when you keep doing that. So um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to the gradient mesh tool. And this is a new tool I haven't introduced yet. It's kind of fun. And you're going to click on this red right here. And all we're going to do is we're going to add some black. By coming up to our color and add some black. And not too much. And we can actually hit that gradient mesh in any one of these areas that are still available. And it's going to create that black in specific areas on here. And the way that you manipulate that black is by hitting the direct selection on these points right here and kind of moving everything around. It's it's really fun when you can uh, work with gradient meshes. Um, you know, definitely you have to use a direct selection on that. And that's how I got this shadow right under here. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type out the word SH and then the word TS. And we're going to do SH and we're going to make this larger. And we're going to put that where it needs to go. Oh, by the way, the font that I am using, and I will put it below, name it below the video, is called Microgramma. I love this font. My old company logo was Microgramma for a while. Um, we're going to fill this with white for right now, and we're going to Command C, Command B behind, and we're going to make sure our stroke is filled with black, and we're going to make it really thick. All right. Where the hell is it? There it is. All right. Now we're going to Command C, Command B again, and we're going to make our stroke white. And we're going to make that thicker. And I am actually going to, I'm going to lock everything so I can grab that SH by itself by going to Command L, uh, Command 2, excuse me, I'm thinking of Adobe Muse. Um, and we're going to select these, Option, click, and shift it over. And we're just going to do TS. We're going to hit Escape to get out of the selection and Command 2. It's going to lock it. And remember, we have three layers. So TS, we're redoing the, and we're going to lock that. And then TS one more time escape and now we're going to unlock everything by going to command option two okay and we're just going to change the first t to red on the fill and we're going to just select the h and we're going to fill that with the same red and now we have shots all right shots hockey we're going to move this down actually we're going to move it over and i'm going to put my little hockey sticks on top of here and it's cool because we're adding some dimension. Instead of just having them over here, you're adding them kind of into the logo. Uh, make them a little bit smaller so maybe they're not too prominent. Um, but it's all experimentation, you know. This, that's what's so much fun about being a designer. Um, when your client sees the first drafts or, or, you know, vinyl drafts, they don't know. It's, you know, there's no right from wrong. It's whatever. It, it's what they like and, and you can do multiple 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 instances of uh, the same type of logo it's it's so much fun so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make uh, a little rectangle on here and we're going to send it to the back okay and we're going to well this one right here my up here has a little white stroke on behind this so we're going to command c command b and we're going to add white to the stroke and we're going to Increase that a little bit. Let's see, oh, Jesus, come on. Love computers, don't you? All right, we're going to add a white stroke. Maybe it'll do it this time. You know, I'm actually so zoomed in right now. If I did like 300 points, you still wouldn't see it. Or excuse me, I'm not zoomed in. I'm so it's so large right now. So let me do something real quick. Okay, this should be better. All right, so we have it copied in the back. We're going to we're going to create that. The reason I couldn't create the stroke apparently was because it had a gradient mesh on it. I wasn't aware of that. So we're going to make that stroke kind of thick, and we're going to send it to the back. 
And now we're going to send this rectangle to the back by going to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. And there we go. And we can manipulate that a little bit. Nudge it up a little bit. There we go. That's what I wanted. We're going to Option click, shift this down, <clears throat> and Option click, shift down one more time. And we're going to move these three bars over right here with the direct selection. Make sure you get all six points. Pull it on over. We're going to come to our type tool, type in the word hockey, because it is the best word in the world. And we're going to stick it right there. Um, this right here is just a, I'm going to show you how this is built. This is right here. It's just a little element I kind of threw behind. And, uh, you know, you can do that on your own. But it's basically you get how the Hot Shots logi, 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 the hell's a logi, uh, logi. <laughs> All right, so I hope you learned something from this logo. This was a fun one to build because it's something I'm passionate about. Although every week I do something or whether I'm graphic designing, doesn't matter what I'm designing. That is my passion. So I hope it's yours too. And I hope you're learning and it's helping you build your passion and whatever your dreams are. All right, so let us know how we're doing. Comment below the video and uh, definitely subscribe to our channel. Look us up on Facebook and Twitter. And that's it. I'm Steve Looney from graphicdesignertips.com. Have a good night. Peace.